Hello everyone, and welcome to our next talk within the Human Activity Detection in Multi-Camera Continuous Long Duration Video Workshop WACV 2020 Conference. I will be presenting our work on the topic of Sign Pose Based Transformer for Word Level Sign Language Recognition, or for short, SPOTTER, as our model is called. My name is Mateusz Bolacek, I am a student and a collaborative researcher with the University of West Bohemia, and this is a joint work from me and Dr. Marek Rus, also from the University of West Bohemia. Let me first give you a brief overview of the topics that we will cover today. We'll first look at the introduction and deal with some related works uh, and summarize the contributions of our work. I will then uh, look at our method in detail and cover uh, pre-processing, the augmentation and normalization techniques that we used, and we'll also dive into our architecture. And lastly, in the end, uh, we'll present uh, the results and comparisons to other relevant methods and uh, deal with the ablation and performance study that we had. Let's start with the introduction and define the actual problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, the task of Isolated Sign Language Recognition, or ISLR for short, is classifying of a recording or video uh, of a single sign uh, into a closed set of known uh, signs or lemmas uh, from the sign language. Uh, there are two main approaches within the literature currently, uh, or streams. Uh, one of them is focused at uh, appearance-based methods or architectures, and the second one is uh, pose-based. Uh, we also present uh, here in Table 1 some of the uh, relevant data sets for sign language. In this work, we use uh, the two uh, following uh, data sets. Firstly, the WLASL uh, with the American Sign Language and then the LSA64 for the Argentinian Sign Language. Uh, the first one, uh, as you can see from some of the examples, uh, uh, was actually uh, scraped from various uh, sources, was mainly uh, learning online resources, and thus the uh, attributes of the of the videos uh, differ. The standard diversity, background setting diversity is is quite high. Uh, whereas uh, in the second one, uh, which was actually collected by the researchers themselves, uh, all of these settings are quite uniform. Let's now dive a bit deeper into the appearance-based stream of methods. The modern ones utilize uh, convolutional neural networks. Uh, in the first case, it's just the plain CNNs used to extract per frame features, which are then fed into recurrent models, be it LSTMs, bidirectional LSTMs, or transformers uh, to predict the actual classes. Uh, we can see an example of this uh, in the figure one on the left, uh, where a convolutional neural network is used to extract such features. Then the sequence is extended with the positional encoding and fed into a transformer. Uh, the second one, or the second prominent approach within this stream, uh, is utilizing a three-dimensional CNN, uh, which uh, learns the spatiotemporal features uh, to predict the classes uh, right away. The classical 3D CNN approach can be seen uh, in figure two, option B. Uh, and throughout the paper, we are comparing ourselves uh, to the I3D, uh, which is uh, in E. Uh, where in comparison to the base 3D CNN, uh, there is an additional optical flow, uh, as you can see from the architecture outline. The other primary stream focuses on pose-based methods, uh, where the input is an estimated pose uh, of the signer uh, per each image in the sequence. Uh, these are usually represented as a set of two or three dimensional joint locations uh, and optionally face and hand landmarks. Uh, later, a recurrent neural network or graph CNN uh, is used to recognize a sign, uh, as can be seen in the architecture outline in figure 3. Uh, in figure 4, you can see uh, an example uh, of the estimated pose that we use in this uh, work, where you can see uh, the uh, body pose and also the hand landmarks. Now I would like to quickly summarize the contributions of our paper that we make. Uh, first of all, we propose a pose-based uh, isolated sign language recognition method, which utilizes the transformer uh, model for recognition. We constitute overall state-of-the-art on the LSA64 dataset and on the WLASL100 and 300 dataset splits. We report the state-of-the-art results in terms of the pose-based uh, architecture approaches. Uh, we also introduce uh, a novel normalization scheme specific for the sign language. Uh, which employs uh, sign language linguistics and also introduce a sequential joint rotation augmentation uh, of the body pose, which is uh, specific to uh, sign language or uh, action recognition tasks. 
And lastly, we also conduct an analysis of the pose-based versus appearance-based approaches. Let's now move on to the second section where I'll cover uh, our method in detail. In our pipeline, we start with pre-processing. First, we extract 54 body line marks or key points, if you will, uh, for each frame in the sign video. Uh, there are five landmarks on head, seven on the body, and then for each hand, there's 21 uh, additional landmarks. If a landmark is not detected, uh, we replace the coordinates with zeros. You can see the same example uh, as on the previous slides uh, in figure four. This is followed by augmentations. Uh, the first one is uh, quite simplistic. It is in-plane rotation, where all the joint coordinates are uh, rotated by a random angle uh, up to 13 degrees. Uh, the second augmentation technique that we employ uh, is a squeeze, where all the frames are uh, basically squeezed uh, from both horizontal slides uh, by shrinking the lateral edges. Uh, the next one is the perspective transformation, where uh, we are actually trying to uh, simulate recording the signs from uh, different uh, tilts and angles. And here, the joint coordinates are projected onto a new plane with a uh, spatially defined uh, center of projection. The last augmentation technique that we present here is the sequential joint rotation. Um, here, uh, both arms are passed successively uh, and the impending landmark is slightly rotated with respect uh, to the current one. And uh, what we're trying to do with this is to actually simulate, uh, you know, slight negligible uh, variances in each execution of a sign, which do not change uh, the semantic meaning uh, after all. You can see an example of this in the uh, lower right uh, figure. Now let's move on to our normalization technique. We utilize some of the findings from sign language linguistics uh, concerning the use of space and we project the body landmarks onto the signing space. Uh, the signing space is defined with respect to the head metric uh, of each signer uh, and is thus personalized and helps overcome the differences in body structure and camera setting. The hands are then represented in their own frames and normalized there. Let's now look at our spotter architecture. Overall, the model uh, is a slight uh, modification of the original transformer, uh, where the input of our system is a sequence of normalized body poses, uh, as described uh, in the previous slide, which yield a uh, 108 dimensional pose vector uh, for each image. Uh, we uh, use six encoder layers in total and nine heads uh, in the self attention module here. When we will look at the decoder of the transformer. Uh, it has one query at the input. Uh, this query is decoded into the class representing uh, the sign, and we thus call it the class query. Uh, and the class query passes through a, a multi-head projection module. Uh, this module is actually a special case of the original multi-head attention module, which you probably know, where there is only one element in the process sequence. And uh, in such case, the softmax and the attention module would always result in one, and thus the attention would have no influence uh, on the actual value vector. Therefore, uh, only the projection of the input vector into the value space has any meaning, uh, and we do not learn uh, the key and query spaces uh, in this module. Let's now take a look at the experiments we conducted. First of all, we train Spotter on the WLASL dataset. We report our results in this table. The first three rows denote results of the appearance-based methods, whereas the uh, second three rows uh, contain results of the pose-based methods. Spotter is in the last line. We establish state-of-the-art results within the pose-based models uh, and come very close to the baseline of the appearance-based ones. As for the LSA64 dataset, we establish overall state-of-the-art results uh, by achieving an accuracy of 100%. We also conduct an ablation study, which studies uh, the merits of the normalization as well as the individual augmentations. Uh, as we can see with the model B, uh, simply adding normalization scheme uh, to the pipeline dramatically increases the accuracy. Uh, the following lines uh, demonstrate the importance of individual augmentations. Uh, and the last line shows the results when we combine all of the augmentations, normalization, and also the Gaussian noise. Lastly, we conducted a performance study uh, which uh, analyzes uh, the performance attributes uh, of Spotter in comparison to the i3D architecture. Um, in the first figure uh, we see on the left, uh, we can see the individual attributes uh, relatively compared um, 
to the i3D. Uh, you can also see the vision post estimation included here. Uh, since in our pipeline, uh, it is necessary uh, to first extract the poses and it would thus be unfair to simply analyze uh, the pipeline um, against uh, the standalone spotter model. Uh, in all three cases, we can see that spotter uh, dramatically uh, reduces the computational costs, uh, as you can see, by the average flops necessary for inference. It also has uh, twice as few parameters and the inference time is uh, almost 10 times smaller. In the second figure on the right side, we can see how well uh, do the models learn on only smaller subsplits of the training set. Uh, here, we gradually enlarge the set uh, by 10%. Uh, and as you can see, Sputter is able to learn at an accuracy of over 80% uh, already at the smallest 10% uh, split, whereas i3D lags behind. Sputter eventually converges, uh, whereas i3D only uh, gets at uh, approximately 98% uh, of accuracy later. To conclude, I would quickly like to summarize our work. Uh, first of all, we propose a novel approach of utilizing Transformer for the task of isolated time language recognition operating on top of body post sequence representations. Uh, we apply knowledge from sign language linguistics to create a robust normalization technique, as well as a new data augmentation technique specific for the sign language. We validate our approach on two datasets for isolated sign language recognition, LSA64 and WLASL. For the first, we report overall state-of-the-art results, and for the WLASL 100 and 300, we register state-of-the-art results within post-based methods. We have also performed a performance study comparing our model to the i3D baseline, which proved that the newly proposed architecture is substantially less demanding and generalizes well even on very small training sets. And this is all from my side. Thank you very much for listening. Hereby, we'd also like to thank uh, Lindat and Infracezet who supported this research.